Good morning. We are going to be validating the previous OLS assumption we did the other day. Validating the previous OLS assumption is to ensure that the OLS assumption is blue. When OLS assumption is blue, it is best linear unbiased estimator. And for an OLS assumption to be blue, it then means that the normality of the residual must be stable. The, the equation must be correctly specified. Then the model must also fall within the 95% confidence interval. There will be no issue of serial correlation. There will be no issue of heteroskedasticity. Then there is no issue of first order autocorrelation and the absence of multicollinearity. So in video of violations of OLS assumptions, I'm going to split it into two parts. The first phase of this video will capture how to identify normality of the residual, how to identify uh, the correctness of the model, how to identify the stability of the equation. While the second phase of the video we actually capture how to identify the presence of serial correlation, how to identify the presence of heteroskedasticity, how to identify the presence of first uh, autocorrelation and multicollinearity. So I want you to stay tuned my video and enjoy it while it lasts. Basically, assumption three, the third assumption of the classical least square states that. The residuals are normally distributed with zero mean and constant variance. This assumption relies on model misspecification. Uh, model misspecification occur when either a particular variable is omitted or an important variable is omitted in the equation or an important or a variable that is not important is being added into the equation. At that level, the model has been misspecified. And there are three tests to test or to check if the model is correctly specified in any regression equations. This test includes the normality of the residual, the Ransing retest test, and the model stability test, which is also known as a recursive test. The recursive test is estimated with Kuzum or the Kuzum of square test. So these are the three tests I'm going to teach you this morning, show you, show you how to identify when these tests are, are the, uh, the, when these particular three items or three variables or three problems are being identified in an OLX uh, estimation. So let's go to my EV portal where I will show you how to read these tests and how to get them uh, interpreted. My EV portal, this is the EV. This is my EV worksheet. Uh, I estimated the impact of a budget deficit on uh, economic growth in Nigeria. Let's assume it's an OLS estimation. Recall the last time I told you for you to perform an OLX, it is expected that all your time series variables were reverting to their means. That means that OLX is a long run estimation procedure that requires all your variable to be integrated at order zero. Let's assume that that is what we use and that is what we are working on. So for me to identify if this particular estimation is blue, if this estimation is in line with the OLS assumption, if there is no violation of the OLS assumption. Okay, given the three conditions I specified previously, I will go to view, we go to view, you go to view then you you come over to residual diagnostics you come over to residual diagnostics from view you come to residual diagnostics from residual diagnostics a maneuver to histogram normality text if you hit the histogram normality test button you'll be exposed to to this kind of results and your major attention should go to the Jack Weberia statistics. The Jack Weberia statistics and its probability value. 
Whenever time the probability value of the Jacques Ibira statistics is more than 0.05, which is 5%, it then means that the residual of this particular estimation is normally distributed. Remember that when a residual of an estimation is normally distributed, such estimation or such residual is in line with the Gaussian condition. So basically, we believe, given the fact that the probability value of our Jack Ibera statistics is 0 0.570364, we now conclude that the residual of this estimation is normally distributed and it is desirable and we accept it. We are happy with this because this is what we wanted. So having certified that this is correct, we now proceed to check for uh, the stability of the model using the Ramsey retest, the, the, the Kusum and Kusum of square text. So if you go to residual diagonistics again, sorry, sorry, uh, stability diagonistics again, you man over to recursive estimate OLS only. You click Kusum. If you click OK, you are not exposed to, to Kusum. This is how Kusum look like. And if you look at this particular graph, we have a red line and the blue line. We also have the black line. The black line is the steady state, the stationary line, the zero point, while the blue line is the main Kusum. The blue line gives us the trend of the variable we are working on. However, the red line is like the margin line. So whenever time this blue line crosses this red line, just like what we have here, whenever time this blue line intersects with this red line, it then means that this model is not stable. It then means that the estimated model is not within the 95% confidence interval, and that means that there is a problem. And given the fact that there is a problem, then the part of the OLX assumption has been violated, and I'm not happy with this. So let me proceed to actually check for Ramsey retest text uh, using the same procedure. You go to view, you go to residual uh, stability diagnostics rather, then you maneuver to Ramsey retest text. When you hit the Ramsey retest text button, you get something that looks like this. This also shows that the model is not correctly specified. So since the model is not correctly specified, there is also a problem with the Ramsey retest. How do you know that the model is not correctly specified? If you look at the T statistics, the F statistics, and the likelihood ratio of the Ramsey retest test equation, you observe that the probability values of these statistics I mentioned are all less than 5%. And since the probability values of these equations are all less than 5%, it then means that the model is not correctly specified. And for the model to be correctly specified, the probability values of this particular statistics must be higher than 5%. And the rule of thumb is that the higher the probability values of these statistics, the better the estimation. Due to these developments, we now conclude that the estimation we did, this particular regression, this particular OLS estimation, though looks fine, though seems good, but there's an issue with this estimation because despite the fact that the p-values of this particular uh, parameters are significant, yes, there's an issue because this particular regression seems to be a spurious regression. And if you also look at the double Watson statistics of this regression, is 0 0.585385, which lies below the minima or the minimum uh, range of, of uh, uh, double Watson statistics. Recall that the double Watson range from uh, 0 1.5 to 2.5, so this is less than 1.5. Given the fact that this is less than 1.5, we now conclude that 
the double waxing statistics shows an evidence of first order auto correlation so this is how you read your post estimation text and make meaning out of it if you find yourself in this kind of situation the best thing to do is to go back to the economic theory upon which your model is being built we estimate the model and see if you can get a better result because it is not fine it is not interesting it is not so accepted that you will submit a result of this nature for publication or for people to read in your texts in your projects so this morning thank you thank you uh, in the next video i'm going to teach you how to identify the presence of serial correlation auto correlation heteroskedasticity and also how to perform uh, multi collinearity thank you and god bless you